This episode is dedicated to the men and women ensuring that crime never pays. Here at Lab Insider, we are disgusted with criminal behavior, which is why we're honored to look at the facilities that combat the vices in our society. The Crime Lab, also called the Forensic Lab, is a facility where analyses are performed on evidence generated by crimes or even the tiniest of civil infractions. Scientists analyze evidence collected from crime scenes, suspects, and victims too. They look at everything from DNA to fingerprints or even illicit substances. This can be physical, chemical, biological, or digital evidence, and looks at specialists in a broad range of disciplines. Now that includes behavioral forensic science, forensic pathology, forensic anthropology, crime scene investigation, and even ballistics. So you're wondering who's in charge here? Well, many labs are publicly funded and overseen by national or local governments, but that's not always the case. Private labs exist that specialize in fields such as drug analysis and DNA fingerprinting. In fact, England and Wales are among the few places in the world that have exclusively privatized crime labs. Now, how does a typical lab work? Evidence comes in and gets a unique lab and case identifier. That's then tracked by a computer, the barcode system then generates an automatic chain of custody of the evidence and makes it possible to determine its location in the lab at any moment. From login, evidence is stored securely until it's assigned to one or more examiners from a special unit. Now, there's drug units of crime labs uh, analyzing illicit drugs, pills, powders, and liquids. Biology unit analyzing fluids, bones, plant matter, insects. Bodily fluids are some of the most prolific pieces of evidence. DNA fingerprinting as well, that can be digital and uh, ink-based. The trace evidence unit analyzes fire and explosive residues, glass, soils, paints, and other materials. Infrared spectroscopy can also be used to identify the structure of substances and allows forensic technicians to match trace evidence from a crime scene or body found on a suspect. The fingerprint unit processes latent and patent fingerprints. These prints are usually compared with inked fingerprints from a suspect or victim of a crime. Examiners may also use an automated fingerprint identification system. Modern labs also have a digital unit to handle evidence such as digital photographs and data retrieved from companies or personal electronics. Now, crime labs live for controversy. Part of this is due to the complex evidence and greater demands put on these labs, but it's also due to increased use of scientific evidence in court systems. That means more scrutiny and even more demand for analyses and, and research. So how do we determine that this is functioning properly though? Well, the first is real world impact. Laboratories should offer more than just theory. From cracking cases to setting new industry standards, they need to offer a tangible impact on the communities and the world around them. The second is interdisciplinary collaboration. Nobody likes working in a silo. The best labs share interagency partnerships between law enforcement, the private sector, and even academia. Thirdly, labs need to look to the future. Today's problems are nothing compared to what happens tomorrow. Field testing new technologies, analyzing cyber threats, these labs need to be focused on what happens next. So let's take a look at some of the ideal model facilities from the US. Ogle Bay Hall in West Virginia is designed for specialist areas in microscopy, forensic chemistry, prints, documents, DNA, trace evidence, you name it. But they very much specialize in live scan devices for electronically capturing prints and integrated ballistics and bullet and shell casing analysis. Another US facility called the Purdue Cybersecurity and Forensics Lab is a leading laboratory forensics research facility that focuses on digital and cyber forensics. It's equipped, yes, but it's experienced too. The lab's director of security, Dr. Marcus Rogers, has more than 18 years of experience in internet technology security. Thirdly, the Forensic Sciences Institute in North Carolina takes a three-pronged approach to forensics. They specialize in forensic anthropology, forensic chemistry, and forensic uh, entomology. Each has a dedicated lab that looks into wildfire forensics, virtual crime scene analysis, forensic textiles, and the geometric uh, morphometric classification of crania. Research is led by faculty from various disciplines, including clinical sciences, molecular sciences, and even textile engineering. These facilities are designed to stop crime in its tracks. We rely on these labs more than ever in criminal investigations. Thanks to that, workloads have skyrocketed. But as they look to the future, labs need to streamline their processes and offer up-to-date training to keep up with tech capabilities in solving crime. 
It's effectively an arms race, but it's a necessary race. Just remember, forensic labs are the backbone of law enforcement. A well-functioning crime lab ensures that our society can remain safe with justice for all. So for all those working tireless hours in the forensic lab, we salute you. Thank you.